Hi, I'm Tom Field, Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. Welcome to today's session entitled, Why Leadership in Data Governance is Critical to Policy Management. Your presenters today are Deborah Kish, Executive Vice President, Marketing and Research with FASU, and Ron Arden, Executive Vice President and COO, also with FASU. Now, before I turn this over to Deborah and Ron, let me give you some background on today's session. The unfortunate reality is that your data security strategy will most likely stall or fail. Unstructured data is getting out of view and control in every organization across verticals. Policy management plays a critical role in the development of data security initiatives, but it also requires a coordinated data governance strategy. C-level management must conduct business assessments that will drive strong policies, ensuring unstructured data is consistently protected across the organization. In today's session, Deborah, a former Gartner data security analyst, is going to show the path towards simpler and stronger data security, privacy, control, and visibility. From her and Ron, you'll learn how to avoid the pitfalls that plague enterprise projects and how to, one, work as a team to develop a strong, coordinated governance strategy. Two, utilize the many aspects and information of your data to ensure policy follows the strategy. And finally, to develop exceptional and dynamic controls to ensure your data is constantly protected. A bit of information about Information Security Media Group. We're a global intelligence and education firm and currently we publish more than two dozen international media sites. These include Bank Info Security and CU Info Security for financial services, Gov Info Security for the public sector, and Healthcare Info Security for the medical community. We also publish Info Risk Today about information risk management, Data Breach Today about breach prevention and response, and Careers Info Security. Now, each of these sites is dedicated to providing education and intelligence regarding information security, but they're specifically tailored to their individual sectors. In all, with over 750,000 members registered to our sites, we've created a true information source that tackles the key issues of interest to our unique audience. Just a few notes of housekeeping, please. If you have any questions for our speakers during the course of the session, you can submit them anytime via the chat window that you see on your screen. If any of you should experience technical issues while viewing today's webinar, please dial the number that you see on your screen. If you dial extension 115, we do have technical support staff standing by to help. Also, I do need to emphasize the content being presented in today's webinar is copyrighted material. As such, it's meant for today's session and individual study purposes only. If you or your organization would like to use any of the information presented in today's session, or if you're looking for customized training materials, please contact us. It's my pleasure to introduce our sponsor today, FASU. FASU provides unstructured data security and enterprise document platforms that enable customers to protect, control, trace, and analyze critical business information while enhancing productivity. FASU has successfully retained its leadership position in the unstructured data security market by deploying enterprise-wide solutions for more than 1,500 organizations globally, securing more than 2.7 million users. FASU is seeing continuous improvement in its global position based on its unique technology, ongoing R&D, and strategic approach to its product's capabilities. The vision to empower customers with platform technologies to achieve successful digital transformation. To exceed customers' expectations throughout the digital journey, FASU is dedicated to deliver exceptional value through software and services all around the world. It has a relentless focus on innovation and creativity and will continue to provide solutions to the challenges faced by organizations of all sizes and industries. To learn more, please visit FASU.com. And now let's meet our speakers. You'll hear first from Deborah Kish, 
She's Executive Vice President of Marketing and Research at FASU. Now, she's responsible for leading FASU's research, marketing, and product strategies in the unstructured data security and privacy space. She brings more than 20 years of experience in research with her prior employer, Gartner. You'll also be hearing from Ron Arden. He's responsible for operations and successful deployment of products and services to FASU's customers as Executive Vice President and COO. He's got more than 30 years of strategic planning, marketing, sales, business development, consulting, and technical experience in the IT and cybersecurity industries. With that, let me turn you over to Ron Arden and Deborah Kish. Folks, the show is yours. Thanks, Tom, and hi, everybody, and thank you so much for joining. This is Deborah Kish, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Ron Arden. I'm here to present to you the last of the series of three webinars. And in this webinar, we'll tell you why leadership data governance is critical to policy management. And here's a lot of the problems. A lot of you are dealing with data across multiple disconnected silos. You've got all these repositories, CRMs and ERPs and so on, from different suppliers and security policies, different security policies are attached to each of them. It's hard to keep up with this because none of it is unified. And you're probably still working from a data governance plan or strategy from years ago. And you may have tweaked it a little bit here and there when you adopted um, the cloud, ultimately. And unstructured data in the form of sensitive documents, including intellectual property and personally identifiable information, is the wild, wild west. It's the wild, wild west of data security and privacy because it is pulled from these CRMs and ERPs that you have in these disconnected silos. And it travels freely internally to your organization. Then you ultimately end up looking like the guy on the right of the screen. All of this unstructured data that was pulled out of those ERP and CRM databases with no plan. It's scattered everywhere, meaning that it's hard to get under control, and it's hard to see. Now, if I were to go back to the first webinar, where I talked a bit about how unstructured data is flowing through a variety of point solutions, where policy is injected into each individually. The problem here is that it's difficult to manage and make changes because, like I mentioned before, you might be working on a policy from before implementing new point solutions or maybe you couldn't keep up with your cloud deployments and as you adopted more and more of the cloud. It's likely that some or most of these point solutions are rules-based and depending on the function of each of them or why they were even implemented in the first place, they all perform based on specific policy for that specific tool. The difficulty here is twofold. As you introduce new tools, you need to ensure that policy is correctly, con correctly configured and is logical. And skill set shortages or human error, as well as keeping pace with the continuous growth of unstructured data, there's no real wiggle room for mistakes. So here's the thing, unstructured data is everybody's business because it's both an asset and a liability or value and risk, however you want to think about it. And it touches all parts of the business, everything from risk management to the overall business performance. There's unstructured data in everybody's business unit or every business unit and everyone across the organization needs to be aware of both the value and the risk. But there's a break in the system. It's been evident to me for a long time that many organization stakeholders, C-level folks, business unit leaders, and so on, don't talk to one another with respect to how they need to handle data security, particularly in the context of unstructured data. To some extent, this is understandable because each stakeholder has their own agenda, their own process, budget, and so on. They have their own ideas and balancing risk management with business productivity can be difficult. Attempts to tie in governance with security and collaboration and compliance often end up going nowhere or stalled. And how do you avoid stalled projects and secured unstructured data? 
In a nutshell, it takes teamwork, all hands in. But what do we mean by teamwork? Teamwork means talk to one another, talk to each other and get on the same page. Talk about your data and make a plan with a goal towards protecting it and creating a stronger data security strategy that as a company, not just a business unit, you can achieve. Understand each other's challenges. Talk about how to address them and ensure that you have a common goal. You may find in these conversations that there are a lot of commonalities, which Ron will talk to in a, in a few slides from now, but that you'll find some commonalities across the board in terms of these challenges. And it won't be easy by any means, but it might, take, it might make things uh, more manageable. Organizations are challenged with how to implement the security and privacy requirements due to the unique challenges associated with unstructured data. And many of you have probably only just begun thinking about it. Thinking about unstructured data is what I mean. So you need to build in unstructured data into your data governance strategy. And depending on the industry you're in, your organization may have, and we find this in most cases, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of your data is unstructured. Privacy regulations and laws or, or other regulations and corporate intellectual property protection are all driving data governance requirements. But it's the challenge of implementing the security and privacy requirements passed down from data governance to your unstructured data inventory that's difficult. That said, I mentioned about how it takes teamwork to get a strong data governance strategy in place. And you might be thinking, what exactly is the work of the team? Well, I'm going to tell you. You need to first define a practical data governance plan for unstructured data. Then you'll identify use cases and conduct workflow reviews. Then you turn those use cases, once you've identified your use cases, you turn those into unified centralized policies. And then, this is one of the more critical parts, is you need to change, you, you need to develop a change management plan. So there are some basic steps that you need to, uh, to conduct in defining a practical governance plan for unstructured data. So first you need to identify and pri prioritize um, high risk data. For example, uh, what data is subject to privacy regulations, what data may be considered intellectual property to your, to your company, um, what data has the highest value to your organization that may have been um, accessed and saved in a cloud application or an endpoint. Then you need to identify where that high risk data resides in the organization. And you can do that by conducting a data discovery exercise. But the point here is, is that you can't protect what you can't see, or you can't protect what you don't know exists. Then you'll need to create a manageable classification scheme, for example, you know, we like to keep it simple. Um, public, private, restricted or, sensi restricted or sensitive. Um, it's up to you if you're like restricted or sensitive, but, um, but just keep it simple. So what we mean by public means anything you can find on the internet so everybody has access to it. Uh, privacy meaning internal data. It's generally selected based on your business needs and its purpose. For example, things like marketing materials, uh, product plans, uh, intellectual property, financial information, things like that. And then restricted or sensitive, this would be um, like PII or information that is subject to a regulatory requirement like GDPR, uh, CCPA, maybe COPA or HIPAA. I mean, you, you, you pretty much know um, in your organization which ones you need to adhere to. Um, but the point here is to not add too, too many layers like, for example, private internal or private external because that generally means that you have to go through every file, figure out who gets access to it, make decisions around what kind of uh, what kind of protection to attach to it, whether that's to encrypt, anonymize, redact, and so on. Um, but that can be a daunting ta task, not to mention how things can easily get misclassified. So point here is just keep it simple. Um, and once you've done that, you need to identify who the data owners are across the organization or in each business unit. So who are the people in each business unit that should be responsible for how data is handled 
and protected. And from here, I'm going to hand it off to Ron to discuss the use cases and workflow reviews um, and get a little bit more information on that. So, Ron, over to you. Thank you, Deborah. So after you determine what your governance plan is and your strategy, the next thing you really need to understand is what are the use cases? So what am I actually trying to accomplish? An example, you might say that a specific department or a group of departments need to securely share documents with external parties or with internal parties, or I need to determine that what documents get encrypted because I need a level of protection that's just beyond simple classification. And I want to make sure that, again, only certain users can access certain types of documents. So part of the process of identifying a use case is going to be talking to data owners, talking to the departments, the business, also IT and any security groups, and really understanding a couple of things. When users create documents, how do they go about that process? Is it done at the desktop? Do they do it inside an information system? Where do they share that information? With whom do they share that information? So you really need to understand the basic existing workflows to be able to identify specific use cases. So very, very critical to understand that because if you don't really understand what the current state is and where people are trying to go, you're never gonna be able to get them there. As you develop a series of use cases, and you see here by my example, I happen to have 10, you might have 10, you might have 20, you might have five, it really depends on the specifics of what you're trying to accomplish. What you want to do is map those use cases to specific departments. So you see the one I have highlighted here, I've got use case three in blue, and a couple of the departments need to implement that particular use case. I have a couple of others that don't. So sales, for example, or marketing, they might deal with things that maybe aren't as sensitive or they're different and they may have to share them with different organizations, again, either internally or externally. So I wanna understand what departments are gonna to map to what use cases. And the whole point of this exercise is that you are trying to determine security policies that are going to accommodate the specific use cases that you've got. So here's an example of a use case. This is that UC3 that I just showed in the previous slide. So my use case is that I want to automatically protect documents. And I want to protect sensitive documents by encrypting them and assigning an access control policy to those documents as soon as they are saved on file servers or on desktops. And I'll give you an example of something here where I might classify specific documents like Deborah just said. Maybe I have something that's public and, and since public is clearly accessible by anyone, I don't really need to worry about access control or any type of a protection level. But perhaps I've classified documents as confidential, strictly confidential and secret and I placed a label into those documents. Once I save that document, I want to automatically encrypt it. So as you can see on, on my picture here, underneath file server, I have something called a FASU packager. A packager is just a component that based on a rule set is going to encrypt a document and assign some type of an access control. And I can also have that on an endpoint. So if I'm a user and maybe I share, I save something to a shared drive, you know, like the H drive or the P drive or something like that, then as soon as that hits that server and it meets my rule set, which is a level of classification, I want to automatically encrypt it. Once all that, those documents get encrypted, I now am sending information about it, basically logs and an audit trail to my server. And then at the server level through reporting or dashboards, I can allow either a department head to see what's going on in her or his department, or I have people like a compliance department or an audit group, or even the IT or a security group has visibility into what's going on. So the next thing I want to do, once I've defined my use cases and who they apply to, I wanna start thinking about how can I 
turn that into a centralized group of, of unified policies. So you might have a series of systems that are out there that give you different types of security. Uh, this could be on endpoints, it could be in a cloud environment, uh, could be at a file server, could be at an information system. And just give me an example. So if the goal is to say that if I have a document that has a certain label or classification level, like strictly confidential, I want to automatically assign a set of access controls to that, and I want to automatically encrypt that. And if you think about where is a document going to go, I'm going to be addressing a lot of my different security mechanisms. So let's say I wanted to share that document with an external party. It's encrypted, I have access control. So when I share that externally, it is going to be protected. If I'm sharing something in a cloud environment, the same thing, regardless of location, I will be able to still have a consistent unified set of security policies. So that's part of the goal here is to make sure that as we're addressing our unstructured data, I wanna make sure that I have a, a consistent set of policies. So regardless of location and regardless of who is accessing it, I am protecting my information. Now, once we've gone through a policy mapping process, so what I've done in the last step is said, which are the security policies that are gonna help me meet my particular use cases? And then I may have to assign those to specific departments or divisions, or sometimes even individuals or roles in an organization. Once I have all that laid out, now I have a change management plan. So change management is the process of moving from my current state to my desired state. So if I'm gonna implement a unstructured data security solution, the first thing I need to do is make all of the stakeholders aware of what is the whole purpose of this? We're trying to protect our information, we're trying to make sure that we meet regulatory compliance, or we're trying to make sure that none of our competitors can steal information or anything sensitive gets out of the organization. So I'm gonna start off by ensuring that I've got different stakeholders, business users, IT, security, management, are aware of what is the whole point of this. Then I'm gonna go through a process of implementation. So there's gonna be software that will get installed on servers, there will be software that will be installed on endpoints, could be mobile, could be desktop, could be laptop. And then a good approach as you're going through a testing and rollout phase is to start simply by looking at say one or two departments. Maybe it's the legal department or maybe it's HR or maybe finance who has the most sensitive data. So you start there and you're gonna iterate. So I put in a set of policies. I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna make sure that all of the stakeholders and all of the people in the departments are satisfied with the level of protection and also the level of interaction or let's say the least amount of disruption in my workflow. So before when we talked about mapping workflows, we wanna make sure that I'm not drastically changing a user's workflow. In fact, in many cases, it should be completely transparent. So once I've done that and I now have a good understanding of what I need to do, I can start with a more, let's say, gradual rollout to the rest of the organization. Once I've rolled out, uh, part of that process will be obviously training and, and certain awareness. And then I also want to make sure that both end users and administrators in the organization have a method to address any problem. So there's going to be most likely a help desk in most organizations. You need to make sure that the help desk is up to speed. And then once I get into a steady state process, how am I going to maintain what my level of, uh, of security is within the organization? So that's very, very important. And as, as Deborah had said earlier, trying to make sure that everybody talks to each other is a good approach. In fact, a very common approach we find with our customers is that there might be some type of a group, you know, that might be involved. It's not just IT or security, but maybe there's a group of people, you know, different stakeholders, different data owners that are also responsible for the entire success of the project. Back over to you, Deborah. Thank you, Ron.
It was a good, uh, good discussion around change management, important stuff. So in summary, um, you want to, like I mentioned, you want to work as a team. It makes for a much stronger unstructured data security and privacy initiative. Without, without a discussion, you'll, you really don't know what each other's goals are, and as a company, uh, you can certainly work together and make make things achievable and um, and make it happen. Um, you want to then define a practical data governance strategy. I mean, I realize that a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of you folks out there, have data governance strategies in place already. But you have to take keep in consideration that um, you've got growing unstructured data, so it's important to revisit and start making unstructured data as part of your part of your data governance strategy. Then you want to identify your use cases and turn them into unified centralized policies. Like I said, it's not going to happen overnight, but uh, in in working as a team, you'll probably find, as Ron mentioned, that there's a lot of commonalities and you can maybe simplify a lot of the processes and policies. And then you want to develop a change management strategy. Uh, Ron did a great job explaining, you know, what we mean by that. It's a it's a critical step to any implementation, and um, and that's that's our recommendations. So I just wanted to go over the uh, the webinar series. As I mentioned, this was the third of a three part series of webinars that we conducted. Uh, the first was overcoming unstructured data security and privacy choke points. That was back in June. Um, then in August, we had uh, how granular access controls and user behavior analytics can close the gap on insider threats. And this one today, uh, why leadership and data governance is critical to policy management. Um, and the links are going to be provided in each of the uh, in, to each of the first two at the end of this slide. Um, so I always like to end this, these webinars with a little information about the SU. Uh, we've been, we were founded in 2000, so we've been around for a couple of decades now. And um, in that two decades, we have helped plenty of organizations with their data security and privacy challenges. Uh, we're deployed today at over 1,500 customers globally with uh, millions of users, typically in very large environments. That we're, that's where we typically thrive. And um, I wanted to also point you to some FASU products. I mean, like Tom mentioned early in the webinar, in the introduction, uh, the website, you will be able to find um, each of our entire product line um, that are all aimed at helping you with your uh, data security and privacy initiatives. And um, of course, with that now, we can open it up for questions. Excellent, Deborah. Thank you very much. I want to thank you and Ron both for your presentation. Very insightful. As you say, we have the opportunity to take questions now. And I want to remind attendees, if you haven't submitted questions yet, you can do so now via the chat window that's on your screen. We won't have time to get to every question in the course of the session, but those that we don't answer today, we'll be sure that Ron and Deborah get responses back to you via email. That said, I've got a couple of questions right here. First one, uh, Deborah, Ron, you mentioned unifying policy across systems. How would you unify your unstructured data policy? Ron, I think that's, I think, Ron, I think yeah, that's a good one for you. Okay. So a good example is, let's say you have, so you had some DLP or CASB or, or other types of rules in place. And what you're, you're doing with those rules is you might be looking at specific points. You know, maybe what you're doing is you're, you're looking at as emails are going out or as you're moving documents to specific locations, you know, maybe a file server or in the case of a CASB, maybe a cloud system. And if you think about what you're trying to do, if you're trying to protect documents and limit their access, then if you had classified the document with something like strictly confidential, and if you then encrypted it and you assign an access control to it, then you've kind of unified the policy regardless of location. So if the document goes through an email or if it gets saved into a cloud 
location or maybe you put it on a thumb drive or even if it's just sitting on your endpoint, then rather than you worrying about each of the specific locations where it is and worrying about a different policy that you might have to manage, you've got one policy to say, this document is protected and I'm limiting who can access it and I don't really care where it is. So that's kind of an example of having a unified policy for the document itself and not worrying about specific locations where it might be. Excellent. And one more question that comes back to something, Deborah, you were talking about very early in the webinar. You talk about teamwork and then change management. But more specifically, with respect to change management, who is responsible? Is it the team or is it a single person? Ron, I think you should take that one too. <laughs> I'm the guinea pig. No problem. So let me give you an example that we've had with a couple of recent customers. So I think that somebody does, one person does need to be in charge. And a good example might be a CISO. Sometimes it could be a CIO or maybe a privacy or a data chief data officer, but commonly the CISO might be the person that would be responsible. But what we have found to be very successful is that a lot of companies will have either a group or a committee. So it might be, you know, unstructured data security committee or privacy committee or something like that. And typically the committee is made up of multiple stakeholders. So you might have department heads, and then some of the people I mentioned, the CISO, somebody from the IT organization, uh, chief privacy officer, chief data officer. But the intent is, if you're trying to get buy-in at, at the beginning of this process, you wanna make sure that everybody is involved and has a stake in it throughout the process. I think it's, it's a great idea to have some kind of a group. And then as you go through the process, you know, there's regular reporting with that group and the, re and the group can then uh, interact with obviously their own stakeholders and if they're department heads obviously they'll inform their specific departments so I think again having a central point of contact and, and one person who's responsible but then working through a group to ensure that you do have the continuity from where we are today to a successful implementation I think is a really good idea just to sort of add on to that as well so you know there were there were times often where you know, there was a recommendation as well when it comes to um, just data in and of itself for business units and such. There is, um, you know, there's some uh, benefit to maybe naming a data steward because a lot of the times if you have, you know, too many, too many cooks in the kitchen or too many people with access to specific kinds of information, it can get um, relatively messy. So to Ron's point, you know, it, it takes kind of everybody to work together and um, and work on change management. Very good, Deb. Ron, I want to thank you both for your time and your insight today, not just for the presentation that you made, but for taking time to answer these questions as well. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Of course, I also want to thank our attendees who took time out of your day to attend this session, and we're grateful. We do trust that today's discussion provided some valuable new insight, new data points, to enable you and your organization to be even better prepared to tackle the challenges we discussed here today. I look forward to seeing you again at one of our upcoming sessions. Until then, for Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you very much.